You've got to have a permission slip to go to the zoo when you're in school or to go to the planetarium, but not to have the school tell your child to have an abortion. They secretly say, don't tell your parents, we'll take you over to the clinic and give you an abortion with the clinics they have in the schools. This is out of KOMO, Seattle, Washington TV. It's also in the Seattle Times. Mother furious after in-school clinic sets up teen abortion. The mother of Ballard High School student is fuming after the health center on campus helped facilitate her daughter's abortion during school hours. The mother, whom KOMO News has chosen to identify only as Jill, said the clinic kept the information confidential. When she signed a consent form, Jill figured it meant 15-year-old could go to the Ballard Teen Health Center located inside the high school for an earache, a sports physician, or even birth control, but not for help terminating a pregnancy. She took a pregnancy test at school at the Teen Health Center. Nowhere in the paperwork does it mention abortion or facilitating abortion. Well, you don't tell the scum parents. They're just to pr provide like eggs, like a hen to the state. Jill says her daughter, a pro-life advocate, was given a pass, put in a taxi, and sent off to have an abortion during school hours, all without her family knowing. We had no idea this was being facilitated on campus, she said. They just told her that if she concealed it from her family, that it would be free of charge and no financial responsibility. So they worked to keep it secret from your family. And this is standard procedure with these murdering scum. This is incredible. Folks, this is what this is really all about. And are people going to refuse to pay income taxes now? We built the country without them. When you're paying for abortion, are you going to put up with this? I, I heard pro-lifers on local radio this morning not, arguing with the host that Travis County pays for abortions in schools with taxpayer money and doesn't tell the parents. That's on record. That passed last year. But you pro-lifers are living in la-la land. You have no idea what's going on, the, most of you. And I want to bring up a real pro-lifer who's been arrested on city property in Dallas on a sidewalk with many others. He's gone to court over it. And, and, and I wanted to get Daryl Rundus, a pastor, I wanted to get his take on his view of Christians in this country. The government is criminal and has declared war on the people. It's totally lawless. The way this bill was passed was lawless. Daryl Rundus, good to have you on with us. Hey, great to be here, Alex. Thanks for having me. So give us your take on the story I just covered and the bill. Well, I tell you, you're absolutely right. In fact, there's a new movie coming out called Blood Money, and it's all about what you're just talking about, government-funded abortions and how it may be illegal to give your kid an aspirin at a public school, but they can go and get them an abortion without your permission. Isn't that amazing? Continue. Well... The bottom line is, Alex, and I heard you talk about earlier today, how we all just need to get on our knees and repent, and that, that, that truly is the case. In fact, I was just reading this morning in Second Thessalonians where the Bible clearly says, let no one deceive you by any means, for that day won't come until the great falling away comes. And he's talking in reference to the Antichrist and the one world government and so on. And, you know, that's why we see so much apathy and so much pathetic behavior among those who call themselves Christians. It's part of the great falling away. It's part of that great cup of delusion that God has poured out upon the people who won't. And the system the is scientifically pushing for more and more and more, squeezing women's breasts, videotaping your children's naked bodies with the scanners, knocking on your door asking to see your guns, training your kids to tattle on you. Every, I mean, I've read those passages in the Bible, maybe you can pull up the verse, where it says your children will be set against you by the government. You know, uh, you, uh, in every culture, the government always seeks to kill evil. kids. They're going to turn everything on its head. That's exactly what we see. We we see a government that's not of, by, and for the people. It's not, you know, a, a country that's the home of the, the free and, and, you know, land of the free, home of the brave. It's more of land of the slave. And people are living in an invisible prison. We have had the wool pulled over our eyes. Incrementally, they continually increase. In fact... As our forefathers stated in the Declaration of Independence, until such time as the long train of abuses become intolerable, people will tolerate it. They will continue to put up with it. And I believe, and that's why I'm almost happy that they were so arrogant in passing this health care bill, because I think it was the great wake-up call. It certainly was for me. Let me just share something kind of private with you but, and, and make it public for everybody. But, man, I, you, I've had you and many others to 
celebrities and TV people say, Daryl, you need to start a radio show. You've got to start a radio show. You've got to start a radio show. And honestly, Alex, I continue to put it off because, man, I've worked 20, 20 uh, years, 120 hours a week building a big company so I could sell it. And, then and you've started a national Christian television shows and uh, have a huge bio. And I, know, and I know what that commitment is. Because I have had that experience. I know you're talking, I know the kind of time you're putting in. I know the kind of sacrifice you're making. I know the kind of uh, uh, tax that you're constantly subjected to from all kinds of uh, areas. You get it from both sides. You get it from Christians. You get it from non-Christians. You get it from, you know, all kinds of people. And, and so, to be honest with you, I thought I could sit on the sidelines, satisfied in my own success, protecting my own family and my own things, and, and, and kind of get unplugged from the system, but take the uh, uh, National ID Act in this in this health care bill. The simple fact of the matter is, you now are mandated to have health care, but you can't get health care until you take the uh, National ID Act. So that means if you don't want a National ID card with an RFID chip to track you wherever you go, then you're going to get fined. And who's going to come knocking on your door with their guns and masks? And so the, the reason I wanted to have you on today is because I've told you, Daryl, to start a radio show, and you said, no, I want to support you, and you've donated and, and really helped us. No, we need more voices, more people, more prominent, well-spoken, successful salesmen like yourself and others to go out and sell freedom and the truth. We need more people attacking the New World Order from every angle. And let me just show people this so they understand U.S. citizens may need national ID card for work. That's now in the amnesty bill. But in this bill, it says illegal aliens are exempt in the health care bill, page 65, section B.I. It says you must have a digital national ID card to get your health care, even if you have your own insurance. It says they can implement this however they want, but the illegal aliens are exempt from it. Of course. Isn't that standard? I mean... You know, what should we expect, especially as Christians? And one reason I, I am a Christian is because I, I know the Bible's true. It's accurate. I've studied it. I've scrutinized it. I've told we it now have a one-world government forming that wants to track everything right. we eat, everything we do, and tax us and make us show a mark to buy and sell. That's it. And we're one, one step away now. With this National ID Act, we are one step away from having to take a mark. Because you know what the ultimate incremental next increase will be. We'll say, hey... You could lose the card. It costs you to replace it. you got to go wait in line. Why don't you just take this in plan? Why don't you, you know, we'll put all your health records on it. it. You know, you won't have to worry about losing your credit or your, you know, no uh, identity theft. I mean, all these things that we see that you've been talking about, are, you know, are accurate. They're true, and they're happening by design. They're happening for a reason, and they were foretold thousands of years ago by the prophets of God. And the bottom line is Second Chronicles 714 sums it up best. You alluded to it earlier today. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray, and here's the key caveat, and turn from their wicked way. That means no more football games. That means no more idolatry, American Idol. Ooh, I can't wait to see who's on TV tonight. No, it's about getting up, wising up, waking up, and speaking up, and never shutting up or giving up. It's well, Daryl, I agree with you. It's time... Back. It's time to fully commit and realize this is life and death against this evil, and the fake churches will say, oh, no, we're about to all be raptured, stand down. That doesn't matter. Duty is ours. Consequence belongs to God. I know there's all those verses in the Bible for Christians out there where God says, if you don't stand up against the evil, then the blood of the innocent will be on your hands. You are all accomplices. And I'm talking to Christians out there. Well, that's what that scripture says. It says, it's my people, my people who are called by my name. He's not given that rebuke and that instruction to the lost people. Hey, people that are in the world act like people in the world. I expect politicians to act the way they're acting. What I don't expect is for people who say they love God, who love them so much he died for them, to not be willing to also Well, what's the number one thing? Right you asked me this yesterday. What's the number one thing in surveys people respond to when they hear the word Christian? It's hypocrite. That's it. And that's because people aren't really Christians, folks. If you aren't fighting tyranny and don't have a burning desire to stand against corruption for the innocents, then you are not a Christian. You're alive one time on this planet, hurtling through space, and you're going to hell if you don't fight this evil. All right, here is Representative Dingle on talk radio yesterday saying we've got to control the people. Let's go ahead and play that clip. We're not ready to be doing it, but let me remind you, this has been going on for years. We are bringing it to a halt. The harsh fact of the matter is when you're going to pass legislation that will cover 
300 American people in different ways. It takes a long time to, to do the necessary administrative steps that have to be taken to put the legislation together to control the people. To control the people. They don't just give you health care. They lower the quality for eugenics. This is what they've done in Europe. There are death panels. They do have the case for killing Granny on the cover of Newsweek. This is what they're really pushing. Daryl Rundus. Well, all I can say, Alex, is I would, I would ask everybody listening, believer or non-believer, to question my motive on why I would get off the sidelines and into the battle when I had everything the world has to offer. I could go anywhere, do anything, have everything, could retire, work really hard to 